some gentlemen over here to my right. I see some people in my middle and to my left. Let's make sure we've got enough gifts to give to everybody. But I'm also told you to think, if you brought out seven people who have not, I see a young lady on, we don't want to overlook her. You know, whatever you got, you got to go in the back and get some more gifts. Hickman, do that for me. Hurry, 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 hurry. Now, I tell you what, I said, whoever brought the highest number over seven, I will give you one. Okay? They got some more gifts in the back. He's bringing them in a few minutes. Bring whatever you got. Bring them all out. Bring everything out. Give to everything. Everything. I see some folks right there also. Now, if I brought out seven people who have not been here before, I got a gift that I want to give you that's in this bag right here. You brought out seven who have not been here before. All right? I see some hands right there in the middle right there, ushers. Right there. I see some hands right there in the middle. Just raise those hands just a little bit. And there's a lady right down in front also. That's, we don't want to overlook anybody. Nobody brought out seven people. But I tell you what. What about we have some folks who brought their flyers here. Let me see if they're here. Is Nicole Bridges here? She's coming down here tonight as a cold. No, no, no. Let me see what I got down in my bag. Okay. Come on down there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Young lady, hurry up. Looking like Beyonce. <laughs> Young lady, because she came tonight, I've got a gift certificate for you. Nobody brought on seven, but I've got a gift certificate for you. Let me see. It says 25 no, 50 no, 75 no. You got a hundred dollars. Consuelo, what a beautiful name. I've got a special gift I want to give to Consuelo. Let me see what I got here also for you. Guess what? I just feel good tonight. Consuelo, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars too. God bless you. You may go back to your seats now. I tell you, my friend, everything is free. Everything is free. All you got to do is not about money here. It's about the word of God. It's about releasing the chains that bind us. That's why you don't want to miss a night. We start on time and we let you up right on time. Let's have some music. Put your hands together for Naya Jackson. Give her a round of applause. A young lady coming up here. Naya, hurry, hurry, hurry. One of the most gifted young ladies I've ever heard sing. She's a young lady. Come on, put your hands together one more time for Naya.
Come on, you can do better than that. Thank you, Naya. She could be singing a whole lot of different kinds of music, but she's singing for the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Always good to see a young lady singing for the Lord. Now, we want to ask you, my friends, to make sure you put your name, your address, and your phone number on that gift card. Your name and your address on that gift card for us. Please do that. And when the offering bucket comes around, just stick that down in the bucket because Wednesday night, tomorrow night, we're going to draw. We're going to draw from those cards and somebody's going to win a gift tomorrow night. So please do that. Please do that. Let's bow our heads for our offering tonight. Lord, bless those who have to give and bless those who have not to give. But the most important thing that one can give to God is not his money, but his heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. So remember to put your card and your pencil in the offering plate along with your offering. And then tomorrow night I'll be preaching on my private chains. My private Chains. Nobody knows about them, but come tomorrow night. People will be coming from east, from west, from north, from south, and from every direction, and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. That's tomorrow night, all right? God has a blessing in store for you. Back to the city. A few announcements, quick announcements. Uh, we will be serving soup and side orders Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5.30 to 6.30 uh, over in the local corporate building. Okay. Let's come early to eat. From 5.30 to 6.30, uh, please come out to eat, but remember, we want to tell somebody about this crusade, and, and please bring somebody with you. My friends, please bring somebody with you. God has sent this evangelist here to give us what God wants us to have. Now, at this time, we will have Miss Iris Ray. The next voice you will hear will it be the evangelist Calvin L. Watkins. Give him a hand, everybody.
you get coppophobia. <laughs> because even if you raise up your hands, there's no guarantee that you will survive. Fear is a terrible thing. Fear will paralyze you. Fear will, fear will cause you not to be able to think or to react in the right way. Everybody has some kind of fears. Well, let's see what the Bible says. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me, my friends. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Exodus. What book did I say? The book of Exodus. The Bible talks about fears and Fear is nothing new. It's always been around. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, and I'll start reading at verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew what everybody? Come on, talk back to me. The book of Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Genesis, Numbers, and then comes the book of Deuteronomy. Everything comes from the Bible. Here's what the Bible says, and I'll always declare it. And let them just fall where they may. The book of Exodus chapter 10, verses 10 through 13. And I read, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so what, everybody? They were so what? So afraid. Let's go to the next verse here. I got something God wants to tell you tonight and show you. And the children of Israel cried out, Lord, and said to Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dwelt with us? Let me tell you about the children of Israel. After, look at me now, after God had delivered them out of Egypt, they got to the Red Sea. 300 years in Egypt, they got to the Red Sea and they started to murmur and complain. They looked out over the horizon and they saw Pharaoh and his army coming after them, behind them, and the Red Sea in front of them. And they were what everybody? They were afraid. Fear can even grip the people of God. I've got some fears and you've got some fears. Everybody has some fears. Some folks fear being poor. If you've ever been poor before, and I know everybody in Raleigh is rich. I know I can look at somebody and tell you got a lot of money. But those of us who have been poor know that it's a hard road to walk. Can I write about it? Anybody here? Know what being poor is all about? Yeah. You been there? Yeah. Anybody here been on food stamps? Yeah. Anybody here know what free peanut butter out of a big can is? Yeah. Anybody here ever eaten some powdered eggs? Yeah. And cheese. And cheese? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. That if you couldn't keep it in the refrigerator, you left it outside burned with butter. Thank you. 
be a war when Russia will shoot a nuclear weapon toward America. We live in the valley of fears. And that's exactly what happened to Israel. But God has something to say tonight, everybody. Can we keep on reading here? Let me read, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses, verse 13, but Moses said unto the people, do not what everybody? Do not fear. I'm so glad we've got a God who can calm down every situation. You don't have to live in faith. There are some women who are free of being by themselves and they are fearful. I don't want to live my last years by myself, but I got Fall where they live. Yes. And the Bible reads in Deuteronomy 31 6. 
Be strong and courageous. I'm reading from this version. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. Yes. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Amen. Be strong. Amen. Go back to that text. Go back to it again. Flash it up on the screen. Be strong and a good what? Fear what? You'll be what? For the Lord thy what? He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee and he will not walk. You better open up your mouth and say amen. Sure. 
of yourself. Because you can't have your confidence, man. Amen. I understand. It's not about me. My confidence is not in my ability. My confidence is in the Lord's ability. Because I've already seen him show up and show out. I've already seen God open doors. It's not what I can do, but it's what God has already done. That gives me confidence. Confidence. I've seen the Red Sea open up. I've seen bread fall down out of heaven. I've seen God open up doors that have been shut. Can I get a witness here? I've seen God put food on the table. I've seen God pay a tuition bill. I've seen God raise up the sick from the sick bed. I know what God can do. That's where my confidence is. In here. Hebrews 13. Go there with me. Hebrews 13. Verse number 6. This is what it says. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my what? And I will not fear him. What man shall what? My brothers and sisters, tonight, you got to have confidence in God. The only thing you want to fear in this world, are you ready for this one? The only thing you ought to fear in this world is the fear of the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, fear God. How do you mean be scared? Scared. How do you mean be scared? Yeah. When the Bible talks about fearing God, that means respecting God's ability, His sovereign power. Respect that He's in control of everything. Yes. If God yes. can tell the ocean how far to come to the shore. All of the millions and billions of gallons of water and it come to the shore and then it stops. I've got confidence that God can stop what's coming my way. I fear God because I honor him and I respect him. I trust his word. When God says it, I believe it because I've experienced it. And I've seen him over and over again come through for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The only thing that a Christian ought to fear. Are you ready for this one? Put your seatbelt on. Throw some at you now. Some of y'all might not be able to handle it. So put your seatbelt on. If you're sleeping, wake up. If you're bending over, straighten up. If you're talking, shut up. <laughs> the only fear you ought to have in this world that is the fear of dying without Christ in your life. That's the real fear. My fear is to close my eyes. My heart stops beating. My blood stops running through my body. And I have not made my peace with my God. And my sins have not been forgiven. And I've not shown him how important he is in my life. That's what I fear. Yes. I don't fear any man. Yes. I don't care what title he has. I fear nobody but God. And that's why I want to make sure that there's nothing between my soul and my Savior. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. I don't want to die. Between my soul and the Savior. That's my fear. Closing my eyes and waking up on resurrection morning. Not to everlasting life, but to everlasting damnation and shame. That's what I fear. Lord have mercy. And that's what people are fearing in this. I'm not worried about a nuclear attack. I'm not worried about a famine in the land.
And then I'll end up lost. To preach this gospel around the world. To see how I'm saved and I myself lost. That's my grace. You're about the light in your eyes. You close Father to me. The fear factor. The chains that bind us. I'm letting the Holy Ghost change us. Fearful of making a decision to walk with the Lord. Afraid of failure. Afraid of making a commitment and can't stand by it. It was Roosevelt who said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That's the only thing we got. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's a smart thing. It's a wise thing to make sure. Not that God is walking with you, but that you are walking with Him. Eternal Father, tonight, break this chain called fear. Break it, Lord. Give me the confidence. That no matter what I face in life, you'll bring me through it. You want that chain of fear to break off. I want you to stand for me. I want to stand for me tonight. Just stand for me tonight. That chain. All of your life, something has held you down, held you back. Afraid to move forward. Afraid to step out. Afraid to move toward the master. Afraid to take up your cross. Jesus said those chains have bound you. But I've come to break the chain. I've come to cast it off. I've come to cast it off. Tonight, there are chains that are binding you. You want them broken? You raise your hand. Something, something in your life you want chain broken. He only has to bring one link. One link. And he breaks. Now, my Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you've done. Lord, we lift your shout right on time. Somebody's chains have fallen out tonight. Somebody stepped out of fear. Stepped into the confidence of God. Somebody tonight, Lord, has said,